Hello and welcome to Let's Create Something. My name is Michael and this video's topic is 10 tips for illustrating in Illustrator. One quick note, I started a Patreon profile where you can support this channel and unlock exclusive previews and other rewards. I'd be happy if you check it out. Link is in the video's description. So let's get started with the workflow overview. My process always starts with a lot of drawing, sometimes on screen, sometimes on paper, it doesn't really matter. In this case, I was using an iPad and the app Procreate. My recommendation is to refine your drawing until you leave no questions unanswered for the vectorizing process, which includes thinking about line weight and shading up front. Later in Illustrator, I start with the outlines, go on with the fill colors and last but not least draw the shadows. For each of these steps, I got a couple of tips for you that I hope you'll find useful. Some of them are already covered in my other tutorials, but need to be mentioned here as well for completion. Let's start with the setup. Number one, the small bits. You're a pro or on your way becoming one, so use precise cursors. Hit Ctrl K to open the preferences and in the general section enable use precise cursors. Your cursor is now an X or crosshairs for most tools. Instead of those little tool icons that sometimes leave you just guessing where your click will end up on the screen. Also check out if your layer color collides with your sketch color. If that's the case, like here, It'll be hard to see the preview lines. Just double click your layer exactly in the space between layer title and the selection toggle. This opens the layer options where you can easily change the layer color. Number two, use a multi-window layout. This is one of my favorite often overlooked features. In the main menu, go to window and then click straight at the first point called new window. You now got two windows for the same document but you want to have them docked next to each other. So click on this little icon that stands for the Arrange Windows menu and choose the Two Up layout. This is one of my most favorite features because of two main reasons. First, each window can be at a different zoom level. And second, every window can have the files layers individually set to visible or hidden. In my case, that means that I have one work window in which I work mostly zoomed in with a sketch visible on a lower layer and a secondary window at a zoomed out state where I can see the full character in approximately its final size and without the underlying sketch. That way, I can always have a controlling view on the curves and final look. RGB or CMYK. What color mode to use is a bit up to the task you're working on. RGB is used for screens, CMYK for classic offset print. I personally always work in RGB and convert to CMYK if needed in the end. I do that because of one main reason that might not be that apparent to you depending on your screen and resolution, but I have these very tiny white borders everywhere where different colors meet each other and they're driving me nuts. There are plenty of tips out there on how to get rid of them, but they all didn't work for me. The only thing that works for me is working in RGB where this display error simply doesn't exist. Number four, global colors. I don't want to go into too much detail about global color swatches as they got a big feature in my 10 essential illustrator tips video. But for setting up my document for illustration, I at least create one swatch for my ink color and set it to global, which enables that editing this swatch will have an effect on all objects using its color and recolor them. I mostly use a pink during the progress as a contrast color to underlying sketches. Drawing the outlines. Number five, moving the point on the fly. When you draw a line with a pen tool, you can still change the current point's position after clicking. Just hold down the mouse button while simultaneously holding down the space key. Now you can move the point around. Just let loose of space to gain back control over the handles. Friends of my other tutorials already knew that little trick, but here's one use case I didn't talk about. Every time I need to make a point very close to another line, I use this trick to avoid adding a point on the wrong line or accidentally closing any paths. So I click outside of the other path, hold the mouse button, hold down space, drag the point to the final position and voila, got some very close lines without any misinterpretation of my clicks by the software. Number six, smoothing lines. I rarely use the smooth tool, but I know that it can be a relief for beginners struggling to get a nice flowing curvature in their lines. You find it under the shaper toolset. 
hold down Ctrl to temporarily switch to the direct selection tool and click the line you want to smooth. After that, draw over the parts where you are unhappy with the curvature to smooth out the bumps. Number 7. Rounding corner points. After redrawing the outlines of the beard shape, I decided that I want to go with a more bubbly style, which means avoiding sharp and pointy shapes and corners. There are two quick ways and many more slow ways to get this done. Number one would be opening the stroke menu and clicking on round join in the corner settings. If you have very fat lines, this might already do the job, but it gives you zero control over size of the rounding and no individual rounding of individual points. It applies to all corners of the selected paths. Number two is my favorite new tool since 2017, the corner widget. It's not a tool you can directly choose from the tool palette, but comes built in with the direct selection tool. Select a corner point with the direct selection tool and then drag the white dot, which is the actual corner widget, until you are happy with the roundness. I was talking about this tool before and had a lot of comments about not finding it, so here's some troubleshooting. A. Your version of Adobe Illustrator might be too old. The widget has been introduced in CC 2017. Older versions just don't have it. B. You accidentally disabled it. To enable it, go to View and then Show Corner Widget. If that line is not showing up, your problem is probably point A. C. You are not selecting a corner point. The widget only appears on corner points. As soon as there are tangent handles coming out of your point, it is a curve point, no matter how small they are. And not a corner point anymore. You can convert it to a corner point though. By using the anchor point tool, you can find under the pen tools. Single click a point and it becomes a corner point again, which then displays the corner widget. Number 8. My line weighting workflow. I'm not starting to work on weighting the lines before I didn't finish drawing all lines. That keeps me from having two irregular weights in the end and helps me keeping an overview. When all lines are done, I change the ink color to black. I'm dragging the color while holding down Alt onto the ink color swatch to replace the pink. Now I select all lines and go to the stroke menu where I choose a weight that matches the maximum line thickness I don't want to exceed. Let's start with the weighting by choosing the width tool. I first stabilize the chosen line at the segments that should stay at maximum width. That's done by clicking the line with the width tool and dragging out the handles until the shape matches the predefined width. After that, I move on to the parts where I want the line to be thinner, doing the same procedure as before just with dragging inwards instead of outwards from the line's center. I repeat this process until all lines are weighted and correct some curvature using the direct selection tool when necessary. Coloring. Number 9. Making fills. There are multiple ways to color your illustration in Illustrator, but they all come down to creating shapes overlapped by the outlines one way or another. For me, the most convenient way is using the Live Paint Bucket tool. Before I can use it, I need to duplicate all my outlines and drag them onto another layer. These will be used by the tool to create the fill shapes. Because the tool can't handle weighted lines, I will set the profile in the stroke menu to uniform and change the weight to 1. Let's select the live paint bucket tool. It's a bit hidden, but you find it in the shape builder tool set. While holding down control, click and drag to select all lines. Release control and click totally normal on the selected lines. This will first convert the selected outlines to a live paint group which you can then easily color with a tool. At the end I like to go to Object and click Expand Appearance while the filling shapes are selected. That converts the object back from a live paint group to normal editable shapes. Number 10. Using the Pathfinder for shading. 
Last but not least, I am tracing the shapes for the shadow colors. Where those shapes shall touch the outlines, I just roughly draw over the borders, because I am going to use the Pathfinder to cut them to the right shape. For that, I am duplicating the fill shape by hitting Ctrl C for copy and Ctrl F for pasting in front and to the same place. Then I select both shapes, open the Pathfinder menu and use the Intersect function to cut the shape. By the way, the color of the newly created shape is defined by which object lays on top, so you might want to arrange your shapes accordingly to not override your color choices. That sums up my workflow in Illustrator. My process often goes on in Photoshop for color grading or depending on the project in After Effects for animating. But both of these topics will be covered in their own tutorials if the Patreon campaign gets enough support to make it happen. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. A special thanks and shout out to this month's top tier patron, Zero the Ghost. Many, many thanks. This means so much to me and to the future of this channel. If you want to keep new content rolling in, you might want to support my journey on making new tutorials and my own game on patreon.com slash michaelcreates. Become a breakfast bestie, a burger buddy or a generous mega menu mate. Many rewards like getting your questions in the video answered and exclusive previews are waiting for you. Thank you so much. Catch you next time and happy creating. Yours, Michael.